I've had a very busy life most of my life, balancing school and dance and dance and marketing. Like all of that jazz has been a lot. Um, and when the pandemic first broke out, I was like in shambles. I was probably like never had anything affect my life so crazily. Um, I didn't know how to like separate portions of my life. I like never stayed at home. I literally was at home to sleep. So it was like weird just all of a sudden being at home. Um, and I just come to this realization that like you can't plan life. Um, that's kind of my big takeaway. I tried to plan my life for a very, very long time and like map it out and hope I achieve all these things. And at some point, like life was like, sorry, I have made choices for you. Um, Mm. And so it's the opportunity to either like sulk in it or make something out of it. And I like to think I did number two. Welcome to 99 Humans. My name is Jeff LaCusta, curious coach and Wall Street Journal bestselling author, striving to understand how little things generate big impact. And I'm Nadia Carta, tech executive and lifestyle coach with a mission to transform lives and corporations by kindling hearts to generate a zeal for life. Each week, we investigate stories about the human side of leadership to re-energize your spirit and help you become a stronger leader. Because the reality is that leadership is messy, goofy, challenging, but always human. Thanks for spending time with us today. Let's dive in. Thank you so much for for joining 99 Humans. Really a privilege to get to spend some time with you. I'm so excited. Um, I know that we have shared over some briefing and all of that, but where are you in the world right now just as a start? Um, I am in LA right now, which isn't home base, but I am here for a little bit longer. Nice. For fun reasons, work reasons, or a mix of it all? Um, A little bit of both. Um, How about yourself? Where are you based? I know your CT time. Yeah, I'm based actually in Atlanta. So um, cool. yeah, just working from home today, which I guess is clear that this is, you know, fun stuff behind me. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, Nani and I, you know, maybe just to, to hop into it have created 99 humans to talk to incredible leaders like yourself who have accomplished amazing things, which is I think often what we see from leaders, like the resume version, the LinkedIn profile facade almost. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And yours is quite impressive. Yours is definitely uh, an intimidating list of clients. You have created the 98 agency, which is doing fantastic work with very impressive clients. Uh, You're all over news and media that I can see, um, which again, just adds to this facade of, oh my gosh, Celine is this incredible leader churning out incredible results. And the idea of 99 humans is to talk to these folks and understand a little bit more of what the human journey, the real journey of that leadership success looks like. And the hypothesis is it still looks pretty darn human. You know, it's people working with people and it's messy and there's emotion involved. And it, it isn't uh, as often that that clear cut uh, as it right. looks when we put together our crisp bullets. And so that's what I'd love to talk to you a little bit about today is just to understand more about your journey as a, as a human being, but also your journey leading 98 Agency uh, and to understand more about the, the messy realities of getting to that success um, through through stories that you might have. Sure. It is quite messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. What, what maybe let's start. Um, you know, this is this is still a new venture for you. So maybe yeah. maybe tell me some background about how you how you came to even want to found 98. And then we'll get into the messiness of actually doing that. Cool. Um the truth is I never wanted to found this thing. Um, an opportunity fell on my lap and I basically took it. Um, but I actually went to school for dance. So I got a dance degree, um, a BA in dance from LMU um, and a marketing degree as well. But dance was like the primary focus. It's been like a focus my entire life. Um, what kind but- of dance? 
mainly modern and contemporary dance. Very cool. Um, and I didn't even want to go to college. I wanted to dance on a cruise ship, but I was 17 and you had to be 18 to apply. And I was like, oh shit, like if I don't, you know, get it now, like what am I going to do for a whole year? So that's actually how I decided to go to college. Hmm. But in going to college, I wanted to dance. And my parents were like, well, you need a real degree too, um, if we're going to pay for this. So I was like, okay, what's like relatively comparable in creativity and like a real degree, whatever that's. Um, so I stumbled upon marketing, which um, I took and I liked the cl- course, the classes, like everything was really like upbeat for me, but obviously my focus was still dance. I graduated in May, 2020 plans to move to New York, dance in New York, but the world, as we know, didn't allow for that to happen. Um, and we had a professor be like, Hey, if anyone wants to start their own anything, like I have a co working space, I'd love to mentor you. And that's kind of how 98 formed. Um, wow. Was it supposed to just like carry us over the pandemic, which everyone thought was like going to be a three month stint? Probably. Um, but yeah, it was an opportunity to take when there were really no jobs available and we just had to pivot. What was that emotional journey like from what seemed like a lifetime dream of moving to New York, dance? I mean, that sounds like a bad moment. There's something wonderful and beautiful came from that. But were you excited to create that or was it like a begrudging, I guess, if I have to do something instead of what I wanted, I'll do this? Um, I mean, I think it was more like, like I was saying, it's just like seizing the opportunity because, you know, like nobody I knew was hired. If you were hired, you were getting laid off or for like right away. Um, I had no better way to kill time. So I think it was not a like a bad moment. It was just like, here's another journey that I guess we could take. Hmm. When did you realize that this, you know, possible journey was actually working for you? I mean, we then learned that, you know, COVID kept going and going and going. And so we just kind of kept building momentum for 98. Um, Yeah, I don't think anyone ever like had a long term vision. So like when people ask us as business owners, like, what's your three year plan? Like, especially in the early stages, we're like, I don't know. Like, none of us were like entrepreneurship majors or really knew how to do like the business operation side of things that was all learned on the fly. We all had those creative skills. We had all the marketing, you know, pizzazz and how to do the actual work. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say there was no thought put into this, but it was a very much on the fly. Let's keep iterating and going as we, you know, keep exploring this journey. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of good ideas, happen that way where you look back and go, I guess we created this thing. I'm, I don't know how, but that's amazing. Um, can you can you tell us more about 98? So I've, I know about its Gen Z focus, but I'd love to hear in your words what y'all are doing. Yeah. Um, so 98 is a digital marketing agency founded by Gen Z for Gen Z. Um, we basically were like, what sucks in the world? And that's kind of adds towards younger people. Um, And we really wanted to change that. So that's kind of been the mission since day one. Um, The company has gone through many iterations, but that has not changed is the mission to serve Gen Z. Um, We focus on mainly digital marketing. So social media management, um, predominantly TikTok, because that's kind of the place where everyone's like, I want to be on this thing, but help, help. Um, So TikTok, Instagram, we also do like LinkedIn, Twitter, Discord, Reddit, you name it. all that jazz. We also do influencer marketing. Um, and that's a really special process for us because this generation is really connected to influencers and content creators. Um, and really wanting brands to pick the right people for the right campaigns and right niches. And then we also do consulting. So we go into a company, help them with a big problem that's related to Gen Z, provide solutions or recommendations and get out of there essentially and let them do their job. Um, so that's kind of our three main buckets, but really our goal is to help brands better understand Gen Z and we'll do that in any way we can. That influencer marketing, when you say it's a special thing, it's singing to my heart right now because my husband and I this morning just met with an uh, architecture influencer named oh. Dear Modern. 
and we're working on a little renovation project and we follow them on YouTube and we follow and like to actually have just a one on one. It was such an amazing, such a talented, incredible yeah. person. And the way we connected was only through influencer marketing. And honestly, it was probably the deepest engagement that I've had personally into the power that influencers right. can have on our lives beyond the scaled content but really using it as a marketing channel to have that deeper engagement as a, as a customer now of his too. That's awesome. That sounds so cool. Um, well, so you, you mentioned it's been messy and obviously uh, there's been a few iterations of 98 that you're alluding to, but can you tell me more about one of those specific times where you noticed that kind of human messiness in the midst of creating this thing? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, Messiness pandemic already struck a chord. Um, we luckily had a lot of support from our university, Loyola Marymount University. Um, a lot of our first initial clients were like alumni of LMU being like, hi, I have a business, like do your thing essentially. Um, so I think that was a really, really pivotal moment to know that we had community support in a time where a lot of us felt lost and confused both in like a personal life and like, what am I doing with my professional life? Mm. Um, and I also think in the early stages, like I think now everyone's talking about Gen Z, but 2020, that was probably not the narrative or the main concept surrounding Gen Z. Um, we had a few folks be like, no one's ever going to buy this concept. Like no one's ever going to have a marketing budget to solve a problem specific to a generation. Like, no other generation has had this special treatment. Like, why do you think you guys can build a company and, you know, unique selling point off Gen Z? So I think that was definitely hard to hear. And that's something we were just so passionate about that we didn't want to give up. Um, so just really having to claw our way through like negative impressions of this generation or still being viewed as kids. Um, yeah. Or just being the youngest and softest voice in a louder room. Um. I can imagine that is a particularly <laughs> frustrating ongoing challenge of by the nature of what you're doing, are you being taken seriously? Right. And I'd like to think that because you're talking to the client, the answer is yes, but it sounds like that's not even the case when you get to the room. No, um, we've done some collaborative pitches or like conversations as well with like other agencies. And yeah, just it's very intimidating until now. I still feel like really shy. Um, although I feel like now there's a little bit more respect, but definitely in the early stages, I had no experience. I literally just danced my whole life. Like who are, you know, who are you to think I'm a credible source? Um, so it's a lot of imposter syndrome, a lot of faking it till you make it. But there are a few good seats in the room who take the time to listen and value what you have to say. It seems to me that you've done incredible things. So congratulations <laughs> on overcoming you. that imposter syndrome because you are powering through to do such cool stuff. But, but that voice, I mean, I, I have that voice inside myself all the time. For you, how do you com compete it and find the courage? Because it, courage and courageous is how I would have described you before talking to you yeah. just based off of the resume bullets. But <laughs> Certainly after talking to you as well, like the pandemic that's happening and you're pursuing doggedly this mission that you're passionate about, that's courage filled. But what does that look like when preparing for a meeting? Are there tips or tricks that you have for like, yeah, here's how you overcome it? Um, I power pose a lot. Um, we had a professor who was like before a presentation, like power pose. And I thought that was stupid, but I was also late to driving too. And so when I like actually got my driver's license, like I was like power posing through the window and people looked at me, but like, that's kind of like my reset moment. Um, and I don't know. I, it's like so weird because like I've danced my whole life and like getting on a stage doesn't scare me that much. Cause it's a lot of it is muscle memory, but like going to a call to, there's no physical muscle memory to it. It's like verbal memory. Um, so that was a big adjustment. Um, and then now I would say like we grew our team. We have three co-founders and three employees. And just like the constant thought and pressure of like livelihoods are in my hand. That kind of gets me going. 
Um, I didn't really have that pressure earlier on, but like once we hired our first person, like there was way more accountability, way more grit, I think, to just keep pushing. Um, congrats on growing the team. That's a huge yeah. moment and, and having other co-founders has got to be helpful. I'd also guess that that's not an easy process in and of itself, that finding co-founders that gel and passion and vision and skill sets and then employees who are gelling with that culture as well. How have you found growing a company and finding the right people? Everyone's got to be so critical at this yeah. point. Is it is it always going perfectly or has it been messy along that journey too? Um, that's also had a lot of iterations. So we started off with six co-founders and this was all from that same program that we were in. Um, unfortunately, startup wasn't for everyone. We had three of them, you know, slowly exit um, as time went on, which is completely fine. Um, we're now left with three of us. One of them is actually my best friend. Um, everyone says don't do business with your best friend. I was going to say, is that a good thing or a bad thing? How's it work for you? Um, it's probably been both. Um, we actually met on the very first day of college. She was my first friend here, um, which is a whole wild journey. Uh, bottom line, we're friends first, business partner second. Um, we keep everything professional on Slack and then everything personal on iMessage or text. Um, I literally could go back and forth on those two like communication modes just to make sure I'm not like mixing conversations into one thread. Um, and then obviously, like you said, finding the right people to join the team was really, really important. Our first hire is still with us today. Um, really been a special member of the team. We've hired some people along the way and they just were not good fits. Um, it is quite a demanding role, you know, when you're only six people, like you have to wear multiple hats, you're kind of always on. So we're really looking for people who have hustle, but also can have fun and just, yeah, like at, at the end of the day, like we are such a small team that we really need to rely on each other a hundred percent. So if it doesn't mesh, it's probably not a good fit, like in terms of work wise as well. Hmm. When it, when it's not meshing, if that's happened to, is, I mean, that has happened to you, but I guess when that was happening to you, I guess that's not a comfortable feeling. Like the dream is it's meshing. You have a very small team, so it must be impacting quite a lot of things when it's not working. Um, tell me more about that journey, because I do think there's a lot of other people out there starting companies who make hires that pretty immediately don't seem to work out, but it seems like you've gotten on the other side of some of those relationships. What did that look like? Yeah. Um, I think every moment's a learning moment. So we had one of our hires that didn't work out um, and they chose to leave. And we were all just like, what are we doing wrong? Like we just hired someone who is awesome. And not to say this person wasn't awesome. They were in their own ways, but again, it just wasn't fitting in this like, groovy friend gel situation. Um, and so we were just learning, like, did we hire the right role? Did we write the right job description? Did we actually need to hire? Like, are all of these valid points? Um, and yeah, that was kind of a learning moment. Um, and we unfortunately let go of someone due to like budget cuts, but also just as well as like, is this the right fit? Um, and those are really, really tough conversations to have. Um, stuff that you don't want to admit either. And like, I'm actually so fortunate we live in a Zoom world because if I had to do any of this in person, I think I might just like crumble onto the ground. Um, so I have a little shield to help me at least. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's, everyone's really understanding. I think everyone understands that, you know, it's not an easy position for either person to be in. And we make these decisions really carefully. Your awareness of every moment's a learning moment. That's like the, that could, that phrase could be, you know, put at the top of this episode maybe because it's an incredible thing to really have internalized that. And from, okay, I won't be doing this dance, you know, dream that I had imagined. Now it's a learning moment of how to start a company. And now it's a learning moment of how to, you know, do it virtually and how to make first client pitches and how to hire people and work with your best friend. It's an incredible skill, Celine, to have really internalized that because 
most of us, myself included, go through all those moments that are learning moments without realizing, like too dense to realize that I should be learning. I could be learning right now, but instead I'm just going, what the hell? And frustrated. Oh, I am um, frustrated. <laughs> All right, all right. So, you know, every learning, it's a learning moment, but but still frustrating. Yeah. I, I take it out on things like I love being active. So just finding a way to channel frustration because it happens a lot. <laughs> mm. um, can, can we go back to that best friend yeah. piece? Because I find yeah. that really fascinating. Um, and I'm curious how intentionally you designed that sort of like work friendship split or if it if it's something that you sort of uh iterated your way into finding what's working best so i'll backtrack to make things even more messy is that we were roommates ah um, okay oh talk yes. about like a work life you know just yeah. total mix it all up okay so we've been roommates since like i want to say junior year of college so junior senior year and then the pandemic year um and there's not much separation if you're gonna work from home and home is the same spot so now we have best friend co-founder and roommate title all squashed into one um so that was a really, really interesting dynamic. I actually chose to move out about six months into starting the company, not because anything went wrong, but it was like, it's a healthy choice, I think. Um, and That's it proved to be really, really good. Person. Exactly. Um, and it was like, you couldn't go anywhere because COVID was like at its peak. So it, it was like 24 seven of this. Um, I don't think we ever like sat down and were like, here are the boundaries and rules we have to follow. I think it just kind of, naturally happened i think at the end of the day like this friendship is so 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 important to the both of us um that like we'll do anything to make sure the friendship um you know is the number one priority we definitely have uh disagreements at work um so that's definitely hard to like let go of sometimes like you don't want to just bring it into the next conversation or when i see you next in person but mm. um I think at the end of the day, like, it's really important to, like, not hold back. Um, like, work disagreements are going to happen. And when you have such a small team, like, you know, having robust conversation is what's going to get to the better decision. Um, so that's just, like, something I think about when those moments arise, because it is awkward. Yeah. If someone were maybe on the cusp of starting a company with their best friend, what advice would you give to them at the onset? Uh, I think, I think it's just like, what's your priority? Like is the priority to make this business happen at all costs or is this priority being like this friendship is like, you know, my bottom line and my co-founder Gia is the latter. Um, you know, like, like I said, we have so much history, first friend, ever, like in college and everything, like, I would do anything for this person. So if it means like having to squash an idea or whatever, like we will, we'll make that happen. So I think that's like what you need to decide um, how important of a friend this is to you. Is it's just like a, you could end up just being my acquaintance and I'm okay with that. Um, and then also just setting boundaries. We never verbally set it, but at some point you're going to have to establish some lines and ground rules for your friendship. Mm. Well, Celine, uh, the way we always end these shows is asking for kind of a, a, a snapshot for if, Ooh. when you reflect on the conversation we just had, what would be the main takeaway that, that you want to leave me with and leave 99 humans with from, from your story that you've shared today? Oh, number one, you're almost 98, not 98 yet, but 99 humans were close. Um, I love it. Yeah. Our, our numerologist Nadia is quite into <laughs> numerology. So you're missing that piece of this, but I'll channel her and say, that you're you're spot on with that. There's something magical about how close we are. There is. Ooh, we've had some good conversations. Um, I think like 
I'm a pretty type A human, so I like to plan things and keep my life organized. And like, obviously, I've had a very busy life most of my life, balancing school and dance and dance and marketing. Like, all of that jazz has been a lot. Um, and when the pandemic first broke out, I was like in shambles. I was probably like never had anything affect my life so crazily. Um, I didn't know how to like separate portions of my life. I like never stayed at home. I literally was at home to sleep. So it was like weird just all of a sudden being at home. Um, and I just come to this realization that like you can't plan life. Um, that's kind of my big takeaway. I tried to plan my life for a very, very long time and like map it out and hope I achieve all these things. And at some point, like life was like, sorry, I have made choices for you. Um, and so it's the opportunity to either like sulk in it or make something out of it. And I like to think I did number two. Um, and- Absolutely. <laughs> Let me validate that for you. Yeah. What an incredible thing that came from a tough moment. Yeah. And so I just, you know, even now as a business owner, like things happen, you can't control a lot of things. And it's just like, how do we keep pivoting? How do we keep adapting? Um, I think this is what this generation is really, really good at is just being flexible and adapting and figuring out change. And yeah, I I would say like, don't be afraid of change. I think as someone who was scared of that or not say scared of it, but, you know, cautious of change got to take it all in. I said we were wrapping up, but you made a, a, something come to mind Ooh, very poignantly okay. for me in that summary. And it's the difference of the environment for when you created 98 yeah. and that we're living in today. I'd like to say the pandemic's over. I know COVID is still around. So that even that phrase is like, right. who knows what to think anymore, but okay. Pandemic is over. We're going out. You, you you are living life hopefully more similar to how you were before, except 98 is now a big part of your life. Right. How has that transition actually impacted what it looks like to work on this project and, and kind of live life as well? That this was life, COVID, all of that was wild. 98 was born and now you're back to life again. <laughs> yeah. Um. One thing that I cannot thank this pandemic enough for is remote work. Um, People sometimes are like, or older clients are like, I want to see the 98 HQ. I'm like, you mean Zoom? Like, I I don't know what to tell you. There is no HQ. There'll never be an HQ. Um, And I just love it. Like, I know everyone likes hybrid. I do like getting into an office, getting to like, you know, bounce ideas face to face. But I think remote work has changed the game. Um, when you asked earlier, like, where are you? I travel so much. Um, so the fact that I was in LA at this time is like ironic because I'm never like, people never know where I am. Um, and I'll obviously take time off to enjoy wherever I am, but my computer is with me. That's all I need for my job is my computer, my phone. Like I can do it anywhere. And I feel like that's a realization that the pandemic's made. Um, so that's been a huge change to life, I think. Um, And then the other one is sometimes I regret, like now that you said, like the world's opened up a little bit, I see my friends now like actively pursuing dance and, and a part of me is like, oh, I wish like I like stuck it out so that I could try that. Like, what if it's, you know, is it time for me to try that? And I like go back and forth and sometimes it's like, you can't just have everything. Um, You kind of have to focus Mm -hmm. things. Um, But yeah, I would say that now that life is available and free, um, work remotely from anywhere, still take dance classes. I teach dance on the side um, and I couldn't be happier. I hear a little bit of that both mentality. Like maybe I can have both of them after all, which is a cool way to think about it. Yeah. Uh, Your (coughs) love of the virtual world is really cool in the greater scheme of things as this like push to return to office. And I mean, I'm sure you see the same articles that I do and I'm certainly living. Google is, you know, returning to office. This is a, this is a movement and that's Mm -hmm. where I'm working right now. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to hear that the fully remote life for you and your company and the people that you work with is really adding value to your, to your life. And I wonder if this is 
uh, generational lines or, you know, times of change, but what are your thoughts, especially working in the Gen Z space on this topic? Yeah, I get asked this one a lot um, by a lot of different people. Um, I think it works really well for 98 and not to, not to say other generations aren't tech savvy, but we are a team of Gen Zs. So like the computer and technology is like easy, really, really easy. Like there's no issues with it on our team. We all know how to collaborate online. Um, I always joke about this, that when I was interning at an actual office and like having to go from one meeting to another meeting that was like in another building or whatever, like the race to get from one end to the other in like the two minute window is crazy. Now I can just close one zoom and open the other, like, sure. I'm not getting any steps in, but I'm like, calm when I go into the next thing. Mm. Um, so I have no issues with it at all. I love it because we work with clients around the world. We service people in Australia, the UK, Madrid, you know, all parts of the U S and I just, I don't think that would have really happened without the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Celine, I, I am so, uh, in love with what you're doing. I'm in love with you. Congratulations. Thank you're you. an inspiration for, taking something like a pandemic and making magic out of it. Um, where can people connect with you uh, if they want to do work with Gen Z, but also just you personally, if you're open to that, uh, yeah. what's the best way for people to find you? Um, LinkedIn or Instagram. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. First name Celine, like Celine Dion, last name Chai, like Chai T. Um, I can share my handle with you later. And then obviously 98 is very dear to my heart. So follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Amazing. We'll put all this in the show notes as well. Thank yeah. you so much, Celine. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff. Have a great morning. You too. Bye. Bye.